firing of Victoria Alonso took entertainment punditry by complete surprise, but as we alluded to in our video on the matter, there was one who was not surprised, and that would be writer and producer Kamran Pasha. On his Patreon, he had already shared intel from his sources within Disney that mass fightings were coming, and that something big was looming, and the fighting of Victoria Alonso certainly qualifies as that. But according to Kamran's sources, and we are not able to independently verify any of what is to be revealed, so you should treat as rumor and take with grain of salt warning supply, there is more going on at Disney and behind the scenes of Star Wars. We are going to break down exactly what that may be, how it connects to producer Karen McCarthy's lawsuit of Lucasfilm, and why that puts Kathleen Kennedy in the hot seat. The full context is about to be revealed, and you do not want to miss any of this, so be sure to watch until the end. Joining me to break all of this down is Kamran Pasha. Thank you, Andre, for that really lovely introduction. And uh, I'm excited, as always, to be on Midnight's Edge, which I think is, is the best news channel that he, that's out there on YouTube right now and has covered some of the most important things we've seen in the last 18 months. And I've been flattered and honored to be part of that process. And sometimes we've been able to speculate on this show and things have turned out exactly as we predicted. So uh, thank you for bringing me on. I've got some interesting uh, things to share with your audience if, if they're open for it. Fantastic. And uh, we're always glad to have you on. And... Uh... Yeah, as I've said before, hashtag Kamran was right. So I'm curious, now in the aftermath of Victoria Alonso's firing, which you alluded to, not with her name, but you alluded to mm -hmm. something big is happening. It's going to be something that we don't see coming, and it's a signal that things are changing and for the better. Mm -hmm. What else is going on at Disney? So uh, that is indication that I put out some time ago on my Patreon that that mass firings were coming and something someone major was going to take the fall came to, to me from very specific sources within within Disney that I've cultivated over the last year uh, in one source in particular that we're going to share some of their intel uh, has given us some of the most remarkable inside information uh, to the point that you know it, I had to say I need to meet with you in person and I need to know that you're for real and I and I have uh, done that with this person uh, who I've codenamed Sparrow uh, as as this part of the, I have several sources inside of Disney this one in particular has been able to get some very detailed very specific information at a very very high level uh, that uh, many people don't have access to and they and I met with them to confirm their identity and and their agenda for doing this and why would they reveal this information that so I'm at a place where I'm very comfortable with this source's uh, veracity and their position within the company to know these things and why they are choosing to leak them to me uh, and then through a Midnight's Edge to, to the world, really. So I posted on my Patreon uh, yesterday several things that happened directly after Ms. Alonzo was let go. Um, and then, you know, a, then Midnight's Edge actually, I was believe, was broadcasting live when that happened. And the very, you, Andre, gave a very kind shout out to me and said, oh, Kamran was right because I had been saying these things. And people had been saying that Ms. Alonzo was untouchable, that she was the, because she, you know, she's a, a minority, a Latina, she's LGBTQ, she's a very active person in diversity issues. And to the point that she outspokenly called out the former CEO of Disney Chapek, Bob Chapek, for not, in her view, supporting the LGBTQ community the way she wanted to on the Florida legal issues. Um, so she's some someone that even could call out the CEO of the company and still keep her job. She had a lot of power. So people said she ain't going anywhere. And then yesterday we heard this remarkable news that she had been essentially axed. The no and no reason has been given uh, for her removal, which is a sign that she was fired. Uh, and you know, and so a, I had put out a feeler to my source inside Disney. Can you give me more information? One source, a separate source, uh, who I call Bluebird, got great code names for them, but a uh, separate source, Bluebird came to me and said. Uh, he initially said, just want to let you know that uh, this, what happened with Alonzo is part of an overarching thing. We just got orders from the big boss, i.e. I, Iger's office, that uh, the firings have to be accelerated. You know, Iger had announced beginning of the year that he was going to let go 7,000 people. Uh, and we saw to a lot of people's surprise that some of the earliest people that let go were part of the, the diversity and, uh, and, you know, uh, equity inclusion DEI group. Uh, and they were the first people to let go, which was to me a sign that this was a remarkable thing for the people that, you know, many people said, well, they're never going to be touched. They're the ones that are the ideological backbone of, of woke Disney. Well, they were the first one to be let go. But people said, you know, they're still low-level human resources employees. 
there's no evidence of change. And then and then sources said, no, there's something much bigger coming. And uh, and so Bluebird said, this is part of uh, we've gotten a, an order in the last few days to uh, that Iger is unsatisfied with the pace of firings. And he's given us until beginning of April to release 4,000 people, to have a list of people, um, to get to the HR departments and and to release them essentially by uh, early to mid-April, 4,000 people and, and do it fast. And right after that, Alonzo was let go. So this is said, this seems to be part of that process where basically no one is safe, which is the word that this source, Bluebird, said, no one is safe. And her firing was done to show everyone in the system no one is safe. You know, you, she's essentially the number two at Marvel who was protected by all of these various uh, political flags that she was waving. And she was let go very unceremoniously, like a guillotine is the analogy I used on Midnight's Edge. Uh, and so, so that was the initial report. It's, okay, so there's a, there's a command to accelerate firings and do it at a very high level. And Alonso was the first the first to fall on that. This person said other people, uh, including Lucasfilm and other divisions, will face the same consequences. And so that's where that source stopped. And then I had put a feeler out to this Sparrow source who has given a lot of very often controversial detail. And I heard and heard back. And I said, okay, well, maybe they're, they're laying low. Maybe they don't want to get involved in this. And then suddenly mid-afternoon, I received a, uh, a, a contact from Sparrow uh, and said, I have a lot of information for you and I'm ready to share it. So I'm going to share some of that information here, um, which I put on my Patreon. And I know, Andre, you'll put a link to the Patreon. People can read the more details there. Hopefully in the next few days, there will be more information that I can post. Yeah, link again, is in the description as always. Yeah. So again, it's coming down to what, you know, Andre is correct to say that I was not present at these in things. So I'm not sharing eyewitness testimony. I'm relaying a source who I have come to know over the past year and who has been right in the past and remarkable things and who I have now met and have confirmed their identity and their position within Disney. I've confirmed it. And so I know who they are. And so I know that they're in the position to do this. Uh, and so I'm going to share with you what they said. And it's up to you whether you choose to believe it. Uh, again, I cannot say Cameron Pasha was sitting in the room when these things happen. However, a source who I personally vetted and I trust has revealed them. And one of the things they revealed, in fact, I'll start with the very first thing, which is has been confirmed as of the filming of this video. And I believe Midnight's Edge already did an earlier video on it, uh, which is one of the things that they said to me yesterday uh, was uh, Damon Lindelof, uh, the writer of Lost and some unsuccessful movies like, you know, like Prometheus, uh, has been let go from this alleged Star Wars project that he's been supposedly making with uh, with Shermin Obey Chinoy, who is a documentary filmmaker who really has no feature filmmaking experience as a dramatic writer. She had done a couple episodes of Ms. Marvel that were heavily reshot. So there's always been a question how someone with just a couple of episodes of TV that were reshot substantially is given a major Star Wars feature, which is probably $100, $200 million epic. Seems a big responsibility for someone who's never done it, right? And Lindelof, who's never really made a successful movie of that scale. I mean, I don't think I don't think Prometheus was a, was considered a creative success. Uh, and so it, it was a very questionable thing. But within the internet and within the fandom, up to only a few days ago, people were saying the Lindelof movie is coming. The Lindelof movie is coming. It's here. It is. It's going to be announced at the. And and I was like, it doesn't feel right to me, but that's what they're claiming. And then Sparrow said to me yesterday, uh, Lindelof has been officially told the movie's over he's out and to stop talking about it and stop pretending that it's a real thing. So I put that out there. And as of shortly after I put that out there, reports started coming out on some of the fan sites that started saying, surprisingly, they shifted tone from one week ago saying, it sounds like Damon, this may not be happening. We're hearing that. I was like, well, you just said four days ago it was happening and it was a big deal. Okay. So it's a big change. And then even Mr. Lindelof in some interviews started seeming to hedge his bets and say, well, we, if it's not right, we're not going to do it big change. And then as of the filming of this video, uh, a deadline and the trades are now reporting that Mr. Lindelof is off the movie. Uh, and, you know, they're still claiming that there is still some movie that Ms. Ms. Obey Chinoy is going to make. There's no writer. There's no script. I don't know how they're going to make this movie with a, with a director that's never made a movie of this scale. Okay. But that's the claim. And they're going to keep pushing that until people forget about this project, in my opinion. But Lindelof, who was the big name for the industry, uh, is formally out, and that's been confirmed by the trades. That was revealed by Sparrow. So I've, you know, I scooped at least 
on my Patreon, I scooped officially the trades, even though there were already rumors began shortly thereafter. But the official word of the trades, I scooped it by 24 hours, and it came from this source. So I'm going to trust what the source says about other things. So these are the other things that Sparrow has revealed. Uh, and again, now we're going to get into some things that are going to be controversial. Not everyone is going to believe the context of this based on other information that is, is floating around the internet. So I'm going to try to give a little bit of context. Um, the major thing that they said is that the other, the big thing that is happening is, as some of you may know, there's a lot of controversy around this television series that Leslie Headland has announced called The Acolyte. Uh, and I have been opining for over a year that that is unlikely to ever hit the screens on Disney+. Plus. That's just been my opinion because I didn't think there was a market for it and I just didn't see the energy around it. Um, but in the last several weeks, uh, Sparrow Source has been telling me directly that the, the, the official narrative that is in the that is in the news that people are going with that this is a fully filmed episodic series uh that they're all you know whatever it's eight ten episodes whatever it is they've been funded for that and they're and they're all filming and it's all a real tv show that that that's not exactly an accurate representation of what's happening sparrow has confirmed in the past that there is a small budget film for filming something they have claimed to me and i'm going to present to you what they claimed uh which still fits in the information that's floating on the internet that there is something filming uh, under the acolyte, uh, but it is not a full series. It is uh, what we would call a uh, presentation or a sizzle reel where they're putting together scenes from individual episodes of written scripts that they have to essentially create as a marketing tool to go inside of Disney and tell uh, Mr. Iger and others, hey, look, this is what the show is going to look like when we go. Can you please give us the rest of the money? And that that's a very common thing to do in Hollywood. Uh, you know, either, if you go to the trades, you'll see there's uh, recently uh, several shows were greenlit off of uh, – off of presentations. It's just a concept that Hollywood has is that sometimes a studio doesn't give you the whole money to here's 10 episodes or even here's $10 million for pilot. There's like, here's, here's a million bucks. Go show us what some of this is going to look like before we take the risk of further investment. That is what Sparrow has claimed has been happening with this and that there are some production entities involved in that and some money flowing. And they've claimed that. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, they had claimed to me, well, the numbers aren't quite adding up uh, and they don't really have a lot of money, but they're keep you know, for PR purposes, Ms. Hedlund continues to represent that there's a full show. And it's sort of the fake it till you make it philosophy, much like Mr. Lindelof was doing. We have a full movie, we have a full movie in the hopes of getting a green light. Well, that that illusion just ended. And so Sparrow's been saying, well, that's also the illusion of the Acolyte, that there's no full series there. They're trying to force Disney to give them a full series. And they're hoping through PR and some filming some of these scenes, they're going to get that. But the problem became when an event happened that uh, shook up the entire production, which is that uh, and this is, again, this is not rumor that you can read about it on, on the trades. Uh, a major producer, uh, Karen McCarthy, was hired to be the executive producer and line producer, essentially run the show. Uh, and she was let go after two weeks and they didn't pay her. That's her claim. And uh, she then sued uh, the Acolyte production in Lucasfilm, which, uh, which you know, is a very unusual thing to do. I think, Andre, you know that people in the industry really try to resolve things and not go to lawsuit. It's because lawsuit creates long term bad blood. And you don't arbitration, to... I believe, is the term used for basically Correct. the behind the scenes uh, trials, if you will, internal to the studio. So the rest of the world never knows. Happens all the time. Yeah, and you keep everything secret. So she didn't go down that path. She didn't do an arbitration. She went to a public lawsuit, which, you know, she seemed not to be afraid that people might say this is going to damage your reputation. You know, you're attacking Disney, you're attacking Lucasfilm. How are you ever going to get work again? Ms. McCarthy didn't seem to be afraid of that. And she's claiming in her lawsuit that she was essentially misled by uh, the Acolyte production, that they had told her there was a job that didn't exist. And as a result of that, uh, she turned down the offer for a major television uh, series, Apple, with Colin, uh, Colin Farrell, whose star is rising again. And uh, it was called Sugar, I believe. And she was going to she turned that down, probably turned down well over a million dollars to be the executive producer of a show on Apple at that level uh, with a star like Colin Farrell. And then discovered within a few days that the offer she thought she had accepted from Lucasfilm was or it wasn't real, she claims. And then and then when she demanded them, it's like, well, I just lost another job. So you're going to pay out this contract because apparently they've she claims they've negotiated the terms. It was all agreed to. So if you're not so it's it's justified reliance as a former lawyer, I will say that's a concept of contract. I I agreed to these terms. I turned on a job and now I've lost that job. And now you're going to pay me the terms we agreed to because I relied on you. And Apparently, her claim is that they offered her $5,000 to go away, which is, I think, Andre, you would, you would say that's 
a very insulting sum for someone. She's worked with Tom Hanks. She's a major, major, uh, you know, filmmaker. And yeah, as I said in our video, that fits rather nicely into the insult rather than consolation territory. Yeah, five thousand dollars is is it's an insult, and you know I'm sure her contract was anywhere from half a million to a million dollars, easily that she thought she was signing with 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 Lucasfilm, and to give her five thousand dollars, that's what one percent, point five percent of of what her it's an insult for someone of her caliber, and she decided that she wasn't going to accept that insult, and she sued them. And so that's publicly known, and it's certainly objectively anyone should ask, how could a TV series that Ms. Hedlund has claimed she has, eight episodes, ten episodes, whatever she claims she has, if that's the case, we know that Lucasfilm Disney shows easily, easily $10 million an episode. So we're looking at allegedly $80 million, $100 million, maybe more, has been budgeted for this series that she has publicly told the world is filming right now as a series. So if you have 80 million, 100 million, 120 million dollar budget, you can't give this woman $500,000 to go away that you a, a producer who who you hired and then fired within a few days without explanation. You know, you if you have the money, that's an easy write off. And and you resolve the you don't get into this kind of humiliating public dispute, which is very embarrassing, right? It makes other creatives go, should I work with Lucasfilm? Are they going to lie to me? You don't want that reputation. So the only reason you would offer $5,000 if you had a $100 million budget is that you don't have a $100 million budget. Objectively, that is the only reason you would do that to someone of this caliber. And so you don't have the money. So that certainly should raise the hackles of people as to whether this production really ha is the scale of what is being claimed, that it's a full series, because they'd have the money to pay her off. I've worked on series where people who were given a credit for having introduced somebody to the writer got an EP credit and were given half a million dollars a year to do nothing, to do nothing. I've worked on those shows. There's four people who are giving half a million to a million dollars a year from the budget just because they knew somebody and they helped facilitate the show and they're not involved in any way. So you can't give half a million dollars, a million dollars to Miss Karen to make to resolve the dispute. No, it's because you don't have the money. And and so with that, with that bizarre development, I asked Sparrow what's happening there. And Sparrow said, this lawsuit has caused a lot of consternation within Disney as to exactly the question is, what is happening there? Why is Lucasfilm being sued? Why didn't they have the money to make this woman, who's a prominent, prominent producer, go away? What is happening here? And so Sparrow revealed to me yesterday, and I believe it because it fits the, in, the information that doesn't seem to work right now, filming huge Disney series, no money to pay this person, what is really going on? So Sparrow said what is going on is uh, that Disney has asking those questions as well, and that Sparrow says Disney has launched a formal audit of Lucasfilm's books to understand why they're, who is, what is the budget of this Acolyte project, where is it coming from, why don't they have the money, do they have the money, where is it going, and what is really happening on this project. And uh, Sparrow claims that Lucasfilm said we can, we'll do our own internal audit and we'll come back to you with a report, and that Bob Iger said no, we're going to have our corporate attorneys come into Lucasfilm and take your books and go through them, and we want an explanation. And Sparrow told me this before, that when the lawsuit had happened, which is a few days ago, that, again, this is coming from my source, I believe it, because I know they would know that this incident happened. They said that when the lawsuit happened, Bob Iger, who knows uh, Ms. McCarthy, personally knows her, because, again, she works at that level of caliber of, of A-list. A he knows her. Uh, that he then uh, summoned Kathleen Kennedy in for a personal meeting that um, I don't know if it's happened yet. We've certainly put on the books. Come into the office. I want you to explain what's happening on this show and why someone I know, Karen McCarthy, is suing us. I want to know what's happening here. And then Sparrow revealed to me yesterday that uh, Mr. Iger's office reached out to Karen McCarthy and asked her to come to that face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, and so that Bob Iger could have her explain to Kathleen Kennedy what was presented and say, oh, Ms. Hedlund said this, this was the budget, and this was the problem she's been paid. Kathy, did you know about this? Did you authorize this budget? Why wasn't she paid if this budget was authorized? Is there a budget? If there's not a budget, why has this been announced? What's happening here? Uh, and apparently, Ms. McCarthy was planning to come and then backed out and, and said, uh, my attorneys are saying that I should stay out of this partly, then there's a lawsuit right now, so she shouldn't maybe avoid directly sitting in a room with the president of Lucasfilm, who she's suing. Um, but also, it's just a messy situation. If there really are uh, audits happening internally, you don't want to be near that. 
you don't you just want to stay away from it and focus on your own agenda which is to get paid off for this the money that you lost and so but that so I was saying that's how angry Bob Iger was. And I know there are current claims that Bob Iger said at some Morgan Stanley conference that he saw some you know, footage from the, from the acolyte. He loved it, blah, blah, blah. I just asked people to consider what else would Mr. Iger say at a, at a conference the day after there's been a major lawsuit. Your job is to publicly calm investors and say, everything's fine at the acolyte. Don't worry about it. I saw some footage. It's great. Even if you are personally outraged and thinking there's something shady here that D Disney needs to examine, you're not going to say that at an investor conference. You're going to say the exact opposite. You know, and Andre, you work in finance. No, The idea that Bob Iger would say, yeah, I don't know about this acolyte thing at this conference is ludicrous. And I don't know why people can't see that, that the only response Bob Iger can give is everything's great with the acolyte. That's awesome footage. That's the only thing you can say to keep investor confidence while you resolve what is happening behind the scenes. There's no other thing to do. Right. There is no other option. And so because literally he made those comments the next day. And interesting enough, none of the trades ran those comments. Uh, I know I know people have played a tape where those comments happened. Strangely, none of the trades, not Variety, not Hollywood Reporter, not Deadline, chose to air that Bob Iger said something supportive about the acolyte 24 hours after the lawsuit. It seems the trades have decided to stay away from the acolyte. For, they are sent, in my opinion, they're sensing something is terribly wrong here and they don't want to get further into presenting, in my view, misinformation, pardon me, misinformation. So, so that's what that's what uh, that's what uh, that's the big news that is being claimed. I believe it that there's internal investigation, and if there is accounting shenanigans, and if Ms. Hedlund presented to the world false information about the extent of what is being filmed, uh, and that led to a lawsuit, I think that heads are going to roll there, and I think people are going to be held accountable inside of Lucasfilm. I've long since said this story doesn't add up. The facts as we're being presented don't add up. And if they don't add up, there's a hole here that suggests some kind of uh, uh, bizarre activity that needs to be addressed. So that's the thing. And so those are the major things that uh, that that Sparrow revealed to me. I will reveal one more thing um, that I think is hopeful and something that uh, will, I pray, inspire uh, positive thought within the fandom. So on all of this, with all this negative stuff that's happening and all these things and people inside of Disney are afraid of firings and, and now we have this acolyte internal investigation and Linda, Linda Loft has been shut down. What is the future? And the remarkable thing uh, that uh, that Sparrow shared with me, which I will share with you, which I it's on my Patreon, but I don't believe anyone has heard this on any YouTube channel yet. So it's coming from here. And hopefully in the very near future, I hope you'll be able to do a Kamran was right video, Andre. Uh, but according to Sparrow, and this raised my heart, Sparrow said, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn has been cast by John Favreau. John Favreau has chosen the actor. Uh, I guess I'm sure an offer has been made. Otherwise, otherwise, I don't think Sparrow would be talking about it. And Sparrow would not answer because I asked, can you tell me who the actor is? Sparrow declined to reveal the actor's name because I think revealing that might actually lead to uncovering Sparrow's identity. And I think that only a few people know who this person is. And so Sparrow's, why is he saying, nope, I'm not going to tell you right now. You'll find out soon enough. Uh, and so uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn has been has been cast, he, uh, Sparrow claims. And then uh, as a result, we, they will also did not answer whether they would appear where the Thrawn would appear in the current season of Mandalorian. All they would say is that uh, you know, they've been cast within the Mandalverse. They will appear uh, that that Favreau has reached an agreement with an actor to play Thrawn and knows when they're going to, you know, when he's going to bring them in. So I hope that that information gives hope to people. Thrawn is my personal uh, favorite character outside of the original George Lucas films. Uh, you know, he came out in those, you know, Heir to the Empire and those wonderful books by Timothy Zahn that that resurrected Star Wars for my generation. Uh, I love that character. Uh, and I think he's one of the greatest villains ever created because he's not really a villain. He's a complex person. He's a lover of art. He understands human psychology. Uh, he is a conqueror, more like Alexander the Great. Not as necessary. I mean, some we can debate this in the chat. There's some was is Grand Admiral Thrall an even person, evil person, or just a conqueror like uh, like Alexander the Great trying to create a new civilization. But that's what makes him interesting. Is, is that I think he's so many shades. It's not an obvious evil adversary like Palpatine or Vader was. That's why I think he'll bring a lot of depth and complexity to Star Wars when uh, he appears. And so that's the hope I want to leave the people of Midnight's Edge with. I've shared a lot of chaotic things happening inside of Lucasfilm, but through the chaos and the storm of this, there is a light there, which is that Star Wars is moving forward. The people that created the chaos 
are being sidelined. Mr. Lindelof is out. That's not publicly known. Uh, I believe in the near future, the truth of whatever is happening to the Acolyte will come out. With a lawsuit, it is impossible for that to remain hidden. Uh, even if they settle it, something's going to get out. Uh, and uh, I think more firings are going to come if if Ms. Alonzo, who was essentially the number two of Marvel, could be removed from power. There are a lot of people inside of Lucasfilm uh, that are not at her level of power. People inside the Lucasfilm story group are not anywhere near the level of power Ms. Alonzo had right in Marvel. And if Ms. Alonzo can be let go summarily, I think there's a lot of consternation, as Barrow has confirmed, that there's a lot of consternation inside of the Lucasfilm office right now that people really didn't see that coming. And she was a bit of an icon for them. She represented what they imagined they could become, you know, as someone who's, who shares their political identity and, uh, and ideology who had risen to such level of power that she was influencing an entire franchise and its entire direction. Uh, you know, I think the people in the story group desire and love that kind of power. And now they're saying someone like that can be executed summarily. I think we're in the next few days, I think we will see uh, more news of people at a very high level in Lucasfilm being let go because, frankly, it's an anticlimax. After Victoria Alonso, if you find out someone in the Lucasfilm story group is let go, well, that's small peanuts, right? That's what I think a lot of people don't understand. Ms. Alonso's firing is the climax of this story. Right. And uh, anything after that is is just going to be, well, I guess, oh, OK, I guess they're gone, too. Right. And so and we're about to see they're gone, too, coming, in my opinion. And there's hope for the future Star Wars, especially Star Wars with Grand Admiral Thrawn coming. Yeah, let's uh, hope so. These have been uh, dark days, but uh, <laughs> hopefully with uh, these mass firings, which uh, mm -hmm. should be announced in the next few weeks here, if the source is on the money. Things will be changing. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Kamran, thanks for uh, dropping by, letting us uh, have this information. Everyone, be sure to check out Kamran's Patreon. Link is in the description. And of course, let us know your thoughts on all of this mm -hmm. in the comments. Thank you, Andre.